by the Pugma. So I'm sitting here uh, where I live uh, beneath the Toy tree and i um, all surrounded right now by Toy because that's what I want to talk to you about today and just share with you. So I'm calling this plant Toy. You might know her as Brugmansia or um, Angel Trumpet is her common name. Um, yeah, she's an intoxicating one. Um, I'm not an expert by any means <laughs> on this plant and I'm not a scientist, but I have been in love with this plant for a long time, almost a couple decades. Uh, yeah, so the first thing uh, that I have to say about this plant when you're thinking of working with her or approaching her uh, and being in a relationship with her is to know that she is extremely poisonous. All parts of this plant are poisonous, every single part. So you do not want to ingest this plant. You do not want to take it lightly. You do not want to uh, disrespect the situation. She needs to be approached with love and respect. And then uh, you can have a relationship with this plant, but uh, don't abuse it because you will get very, very sick and you might even die. <laughs> She's no joke. <laughs> She's not uh, like psilocybin. She's not like DMT. She's not like uh, Wachuma, San Pedro. She, you're not going to get a happy, trippy buzz experience from her. You're going to get sick. You're going to have delusions. <laughs> and it's super dangerous. So just don't even mess with that okay don't ingest this plant so how can we work with this plant is the question now um i'm a gardener i've been caring for this plant in a gardener way for a very long time um so i can tell you that just being around this plant is a beautiful way of working with her just being in her presence and sitting under her blossoms going out at night and smelling her very seductive and intoxicating fragrance these are really excellent ways of connecting with this plant and if you don't have this plant just as an aside if you don't have this plant and you would like to uh, think about growing this plant they're super super easy to cultivate <clears throat> so if you know someone that has one uh, just ask them to take a cutting for you. You can literally take, <clears throat> see this branch right here? I could take the cutting, just this end, very end part, cut it off and literally stick it right in the ground. I normally don't do that, although I think we did do that to this one. My partner just put this one right in the ground and as you can see now, it's this beautiful tree, but sometimes I'll put them in pots like that and let them root. This one I'm giving to a friend, so I want to get it rooted um, before I give it to her because you do have to water them a lot. You have to, when you're taking them from a cutting and growing a new one, you have to keep it wet. They like moisture. They're from the jungle. They're from uh, the Amazon all the way along the Andes from Venezuela all the way down Chile and in parts of Brazil. That's their native place and uh, that's they call her Toy there so that's why I call her Toy out of respect for her indigenous origins and from where she's from and what the people there call her so how can we work with this plant other than sitting with her being in her presence beautiful way but if you're wanting if you have this plant and I know some of you do and you're wanting to like make things and do stuff as we do, right? As plant people, as we do, um, there's a few ways. There's a few really easy ways. One is incense. Oh, well, I had it going. These briquettes. So these are some dried flowers here. Now, there are two ways to dry the flower. You can either I don't like to take this flower from the plant at all. Like I really hesitate to take a fresh flower. Um, I just don't 
feel like she really wants me to. <laughs> that said, sometimes I do for hydrosols and waters and things like that. But what happens, and maybe you can see, some of these are starting to die. And they'll die while still holding on. So once that's happened fully and they look really dead, then you can easily just pull them and they just come right out of their pod. And that's what she told me to do one day when I was hanging out with her. So I guess full disclosure, I did like a six week uh, dieta with her um, being held by my beautiful mentor, uh, Plant Spirit Talk, Francisca. So when I was in that ceremony, um, that's, she, that's how she told me to work with her was to take her dried flowers and make medicines with those. So <clears throat> that's mostly what I do. These were all flowers that died, like I said, in the pod. And then I just pulled them right out. And then they may still be a little damp at that point. Or they may hold moisture. If you're in a moist environment, they do hold moisture. So you really have to let them dry. And earwigs really like them too. I'll just <laughs> give you a heads up. Every time, like when I pull the dead flowers and I put them in a basket or whatever, earwigs start to escape. And sometimes while you're picking them, earwigs run out. So that's fun. If you don't like earwigs, heads up. <laughs> so anyhow, incense. So you can just simply take, with these dried flowers, I already have some broken up right here. You can just take them. You can just take the flower and break up, break up the leaves like this into small pieces. <clears throat> it gets less fragrant as you move down the pod, so I don't usually mess with this part. I just stick with the, the tips. But yeah, you can just break her up. I just put her right on a charcoal briquette. And the smell is, you know, I'm going to be honest, the smell is very similar to tobacco, like a good cigar, um, but it's sweeter. It's much sweeter. So, uh, Brugmansi and tobacco are actually cousins. They're both in the um, Solanaceae family, which is the nightshade family. So they have a lot in common in that way and they're from the same region and they're both kind of tricksters and um but yeah they have very different energy as well so when you burn this incense it took me a while it took me a while to figure out what that smells like but it's definitely a, a cigar-ish smell but it's much sweeter much much sweeter so incense that's an easy way another really easy way is oils. I love oils. Now you do want to be careful and only if you make a topical oil, this is like, this would be for like anointing either yourself. You can, if you're into like, um, statues, like I have a bunch of goddess statues, you can anoint them with this oil. You can, you know, you can do all kinds of things magically and ritually. You don't necessarily just have to use it on yourself, but it is wonderful to use on yourself, but test first. Make sure that your skin doesn't have a reaction. Um, I like to put it on the soles of my feet. I like to put it here, behind my ear, sometimes on my chest, you know, just wherever, but just, you know, go cautiously and make sure that this plant is safe for you. And honestly, don't just go doing this, like really cultivate a relationship with the plant before you start to really work with her because the poison plants I really feel are here to teach us respect and consent and how to be with them in a good way. Because if you don't, <laughs> shit could go really wrong. So, you know, just really approach this plant with intention and with uh, reverence and love I mean we love her right that's why we that's why we're here watching this 
That's why I'm here making this. She actually was the one to tell. I know I sound hella woo, but you know, it's just the case. She told me to share what I know, which is something I have a really hard time doing. I'm going to be honest with you. So here I am <laughs> sharing what I know about her. So with the oil, you know, you could, you could really break this plant matter down a lot more. Sometimes I will put that aside for right now. Sometimes I'll use this when the plant is like at this stage and I will just like grind it into a really, really, really fine powder. So that's a really fine powder, which is nice for incense. It's really nice. It's a more refined smell actually. Put some of that going. But I would not use this powder in oil. It's just gonna get, it's just gonna gum up. So, um, and if I wanna get extra crazy. <laughs> so, <clears throat> there are some situations where you want a really, really, really fine powder. And I'm not gonna get into that today, but if you want a really, really, really fine powder, you get one of these and you sift it through and then you do it again and you just keep doing that and you get a really nice really really fine powder okay so where was I back to the oil all right so yeah I'm I'm feeling this size. I'm feeling this size for my oil. And I'm just using um, jojoba. You could use almond. You could use. Oh gosh, there's a lot really of options. I just would try to use one that doesn't carry its own scent. Although that said, it might be nice to see what. I would not do olive oil, but. It might be nice to see what it's like with like camellia seed oil, for example. I'll have to try that. Anyway, this is jojoba. I'm just gonna. Oh, nerds. I didn't bring my chopstick. I like to use a chopstick to stir, but it's all right. I'm just gonna make sure that's good and saturated all the way. Isn't this jar cute? I love this, these little jars. Amaze. Shake it up. So I'm gonna let this, you know what? I have oils that I made literally four years ago. <laughs> Still steeping and they're just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So just check in with it. Just shake it up, check in, see if you like how it smells and just keep going from there. So I think that's it for me today. I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks for watching. I may do this again. We'll see. <laughs> Have a good one.